Thank you, Kieran. It's uh, great to be here today, and I'm really looking forward to, uh, to hearing uh, a range of great presentations today about mobile um, technology and social media, um, and also in looking forward to talking to you as well. Um, Love that uh, little faux pas about stifling um, conversation. I know there's a few CEOs and organisations that I work which would l dearly love to know how to stifle conversations in social media and, and on the web. But unfortunately, as you know, there is no controlling social media, as we've seen right around the world in the Middle East. Um, even over in the US now, social media and people are using mobile technology to communicate and collaborate online, not always to the liking of governments or organisations. Um, but today I thought, because I'm the first speaker, I, I wanted to get everyone on the same page. So Kieran's asked me to give a bit of an overview of social media and particularly how it relates to mobile technology. So I'll be alluding to some of the things that we'll be hearing from from the speakers later, but I wanted to give you a broader understanding of social media and mobile technology because we have come a long way and I want us to be all on the same page. Now, a lot of times you'll hear people talking about social media web 2.0. And what I wanted to do is to, to define that. And, and to me, whilst there's no firm definition, the, the web, when it was developed about 20 years ago, well, in fact, 20 years ago, almost to the month, it, it was, you know, widely used, and, and a lot of people started using it because it started to link computers. Web 2.0, which has been around for just under, uh, just under 10 years now, has allowed people to communicate, collaborate, and talk online. So Web 2.0, is the web linking people rather than computers linking up. So to me, social media is all about people. And a great example of the recognition of this is time a few years ago, instead of naming one individual as the person of the year, they decided that you were the person of the year. And they decided that because you now are the media. You can communicate, you can pick up your iPhone, your smartphone, your iPad, and you can quite literally broadcast to the world. And people are doing that. So organisations and governments, as I suggested before, are really trying to, to work out how to use this and how to control. And my personal view is you can't control this space. You can only be a leader. And I think that's one thing that DPI are doing. I mean, looking at, at the apps and some of the things that DPI through the horticulture industry network are really taking the lead. So again, I'm, gr I'm really pleased to be here today and to talk to you about these things. One of the things you might notice on the screen uh, above me and to the left is a, um, I guess it's like a Twitter stream or it's a live stream or a back channel. Anyone who's got a smartphone um, or an iPad can actually join the conversation, as can anyone around the world. You'll see people will be updating comments about uh, what speakers are talking about, their thoughts. You can have the online conversation. This is a, a back channel. So I encourage you to not only just look at what people are saying, but if you've got a smartphone, log in to um, the, uh, the session as well, and you can see the URLs up there. The easiest one is tinyurl.com forward slash H-I-N-S-U-M. And you can just quite easily join that. Just put in your first name. You can be anonymous if you like, and you can comment. If you see, some, see or hear something that you like, you can post that online, or if you see something that people are talking about, you can comment on what other people are talking about as well. But let's jump into it. I just want to emphasise how old I am. I started work as a journalist at the good old Warnable Standard uh, just under 20 years ago. And it was just a different world when I was a reporter. And these are some photos here. You know, this is my desk. I mean, how, you know, I'm halfway through my working career now, and I've moved from a manual typewriter typing onto copy paper using carbon paper, using paper clips and a spike, 
to being, up, being able to broadcast to my students live from the web now. We've come such a long way in such a short amount of time. And that pace of change, I think, is only going to continue. And we look at what the media are doing. BBC News website, updated every minute. News is updated every minute now. And this is what our stakeholders, is what, and what we expect now. You know, the news media and the communication that we consume is up to the minute. And I'm at the coalface of that as a lecturer at Deakin University. My students will send me an email and if they haven't got a response, typically within an hour or two, they will email me again, did you get my email? If that doesn't work, then they'll tweet me, then they'll SMS me. They want instant communication. And quite rightly so, I think these technologies are out there and that I, as an academic and a, and a teacher, need to respond. And I think organisations, whether you're in an industry association, whether you're in government, whether you're a service provider, whether you're on the land yourself, I think we need to accept that stakeholders are changing their expectations about communication. And a lot of this is mobile. We saw then a clip about how journalists are using mobile applications to upload content. Um, and organisations like Fairfax and The Age are embracing this so that you can read and consume this sort of content on the web with their iPhone apps and their iPad apps, and we're going to look at some of those. But it's not just the big media outlets that are doing this as well. I mean, look, you know, he, he, anyone from Western Victoria? Read the Terang Express? Even the Terang Express, the good old Terang Express has, is embracing social media. You know, they're asking people to share and comment on the stories. And they're asking people to contribute as well. So social media isn't just about using the web or mobile technology to communicate with the world. It's about people communicating, sharing, collaborating online. And mobile technology is facilitating this as well. So you are the media. Our lives, our personal lives, our business lives are changing. Anyone who's a parent, has got teenage kids or, or younger, or if you're, you know, anyone who knows kids will know that they're online, they're communicating all the time, 24-7. And this is the sort of stakeholders that, that we're going to be dealing with. So I want to give you a quick overview in the next uh, probably 10 minutes I've got, got left to look at some of the social media platforms out there and see how they relate to mobile technology. We've got you know online news I've just I've talked about. There's blogs, there's social networking sites like... Uh, Facebook, MySpace, there are niche networks, so you don't have to create a social network for tens of thousands of people. You might have a network of three or four people, and that might be a great space for you to collaborate and share online. There's microblogging sites like Twitter, which are quite popular, and again, allowing people to collaborate online. Discussion forums, wikis, um, you know, the bane of teachers' lives, students going to Wikipedia to find out um, information. Interestingly, I saw some statistics um, a couple of weeks ago. Over half of Americans have gone to Wikipedia to find health information. Who could have uploaded that information? My 13-year-old daughter. But yet this is where people are going. They're going to the web to search for information. Then we've got podcasts, videos, Photos, mashups, apps, there are a whole range of different tactical devices, I guess, in social media that we can use to gain information to do our own research or that people are using to communicate and collaborate. Let's have a quick look at some of these. This is one that I've worked on for the dairy industry. Um, utterly fantastic is a, a social networking site where the dairy farmers are celebrating what the dairy industry. When we initially 
set this up, we were hoping to get maybe a hundred farmers online, sharing photos, videos, communicating online by the end of the year. After about 12 months, we had close to a thousand dairy farmers online sharing information, using forums, uploading photos, talking about their family, talking about what it was like to be on the land. So hugely successful. And you guys probably know as much as anyone that you know, a lot of people think social media is for us city folks, but I think you know, utterly fantastic demonstrates that people out in rural areas are keen to embrace this sort of technology. As I said, tech, it doesn't have to be for a huge number of people. This is uh, a site I've set up for my students on a platform called Yammer, where I invite my students, my alumni, and other working practitioners to come in and talk and discuss issues on a practical level. And the top uh, post up here, whilst you probably can't read that, is about uh, one of my students who has a, um, an intern opportunity for somebody else. So what's going on online is having practical benefits. And that's another message that I have for you today, is that what happens online doesn't stay online. It has real world benefits as well. If you look back at Utterly Fantastic, one of the things the farmers were doing were communicating and talking online and then organising face-to-face meetups through social networking. So don't think that just social networking sites just stays online, it's going offline as well. Looking at blogs, organisations from the White House down are using blogging platforms, which are free. They're using WordPress, which is a free open source software package, and they're using that to bypass the media and get their messages out directly. And citizens can comment directly back onto what the President has posted on his blog. Number 10. Downing Street in the UK is also doing that. And here's a great example of them using video on their blog. Um, again, just I'm bypassing the I'm media. Secretary, and we're here this morning at Downing Street with... So they can bypass organisations like News of the World, which doesn't exist anymore, but they can go directly to the public. They're using ministers as the reporters. And they can do that with an iPhone or a $200 handy cam, uploading it to YouTube, a free platform, citizens can comment on that. Now you might say, we don't have the resources of number 10 or the White House. But I've got my iPhone here, I can log onto the web. Any one of us can be a media outlet. We can bypass the media. We're going to hear more about this blogging platform um, from Kieran later today, but starting your own blog or contributing to a blog can now be as easy as just sending an email to a posterous email account. That's easy, that easy. Literally from your email client, your subject is the heading of your blog post and the text is your blog post. You can do it from your smartphone, you can share information. Something you want to share with your colleagues, with your networks, it's that easy to do. And I know we're going to hear more about uh, him later, but you know, other departments are using social networking in interesting ways. And this is one that I really like, which is uh, Youth Central. The Victorian government has decided that they wanted to use young people as journalists and reporters. So they're training younger people, giving them the resources to go out and report on the issues that are important to them. And they're allowing them to do this on the, uh, on the Youth Central website. Now again, getting back to my point about communicating, collaborating and sharing online, this is a great way for the government to find out what are the in issues young people are interested in. Because it's not censored. They allow people to, young people to go out, report and talk to anyone they want and to feed back this information onto their websites. So again, it's about this two-way form of communication. 
here in Victoria, Vicpol are doing some great work as well um, on their Facebook site. They have Forcebook. They update uh, information there, big issues like suspected uh, criminals that they're after. And there's an example of one here. So you can upload that sort of information. But the other interesting thing that I really like about this is they use it to communicate with the community as well. They've had real-time chat sessions with the Chief Commissioner, allowing you or I, anyone in Victoria, well, anyone in the world, potentially, to talk directly with the Chief Commissioner. But it's not just the big issues as well. They uh, saw a post not so long ago about a camera that had been handed into a police station. They found a couple of uh, photos on there, posted it online, said this, photo, this camera's been handed in. Do you know who these people are? Now, as a communicator and a reputation expert, I think that says a lot about the police. It says they're not just interested in the big issues. If you lose a camera, they're dedicated to getting that back to you as well. So there can be some benefits from that. They're using Twitter as well to link to this. Uh, traffic alerts, um, asking for information. You can ask information of the police that way. Um, you can't report crime online at the moment, but they can certainly tell you um, <laughs> where, you can, where you can report those sort of crimes or get more information as well. And organisations like Telstra and other government departments are using sites like Twitter both to communicate and also to... Um, to publicise and talk about the issues that are important to them. LinkedIn. How many people are on LinkedIn? A few of you? Okay. Professional networking. Um, just one of my students was contacted today proactively by an organisation who saw her profile online, so it does actually work. But LinkedIn has discussion forums as well. Um, and you, know, you can use your mobile device to access those sort of um, uh, discussion forums as well. Flickr, Picasa, and there are a range of other photo sharing sites out there. Instagram is another one that, which is hugely popular on the mobile blogging, mobile platform at the moment. People uploading photos from their iPhone or their smartphone and sharing them online. Huge number of people doing this. YouTube, another great way to share videos. Again, it's free. There's a range of platforms like video, all available, all, all available on the mobile platform as well. QR codes are interesting. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but they're a, um, basically a barcode that can be read by mobile phones. And you can see here an example of snapped uh, a, a wine um, catalogue with the QR codes down the bottom here. You can use your mobile phone to scan that and it'll take you directly to the web page talking about that wine. I've seen other uses of it on posters, talking about concerts, talking about albums. You can click it, it goes directly to a website, feedback more, inf you can key in your details, get more information, you can download video, audio as well. It's linking physical documents to the mobile web. Organize, and getting on to apps now, we're going to hear more about those, but organisations like Woolies allow you to scan your products at home and create your own, that you're running out of and create a shopping list and it'll tell you exactly the aisle that it is available in in the store. It's being used for research. This is um, a collaboration from Columbia University um, and the University of Maryland, Leaf Snap. You can take a photo of a leaf with your mobile phone. It'll tell you the species of, uh, of tree. If it doesn't know it, it goes back to the database and they're using this as a research tool. We're going to hear more about that. Health and Safety Cancer Council have their SunSmart application. It'll tell you when you need to slip, slop, slap throughout the day. The museums Victoria have their field guide. Find a, an insect, see a bird, caught a fish, you don't know what it is, hear a bird sound, you can use this app to find out what it is um, and listen to the bird calls. And finally, before we get into some of our other speakers, I, I think the web and the mobile web can be a fantastic research tool 
for you as well. Um, one of the uh, sites which I really love and which is completely free are Google Alerts. Is anyone using Google Alerts here? One, two, three, three people. Four people, Steve's down there as well. So google.com forward slash alerts. If there is an issue or a topic that you want to find out information about and you want the latest information, you can set up a free Google alert so that as soon as something is posted on the web, it will email you almost immediately or weekly, if you like, about those sorts of issues. So again, it can be a great research tool as well. That's my time uh, for this morning. Um, I hope that's given you a bit of an understanding. I know it's a very, very rapid run through of social media and some of the apps and your brain's probably spinning. Maybe have more questions. Um, we're going to have...